Well, hi there and welcome. I'm Rebecca Weaver. I'm going to be doing factoring trinomials with le leading coefficients other than one today. And we need to know what this looks like. So it looks like something that has a number in front of that x squared, like a 2x squared minus 8x minus 42. Now this is going to make our problem much more difficult. It really increases the difficulty of the problem. However, however for this one, I see that each term has a 2. So I'll pull it. I'm going to say 2 goes into 2x squared x squared times. 2 goes into minus 8x minus 4 times. 2 goes into minus 42 minus 21 times. And now that looks more manageable. I'm going to do my parenthesis thing. And I'm going to need the factors of 21. 1 and 21, 3 and 7. I need to make a 4 because I look at the middle term. Ooh, ooh, 3 and 7. That'll make a 4. Okay. So I'm going to start by writing in my x and x. My signs. I need a plus and a minus because of that 21 is negative. So I'll put a plus and a minus in. Then I need a negative 4. So that big guy, the 7, is going to go to the negative. So I'll do this. Now this is going to be my guess next thing I need to do is check it. So let's check this. We're going to multiply this out. So I'm just going to hold off on the 2 for a minute and I'll just do the x plus 3 times the x plus 7. That's going to give me x squared minus 7x plus 3x minus 21. Adding those like terms, I'm going to get 2 times x squared minus 4x minus 21. Multiplying that all the way through I see that I get my original. Bam! It's correct. So that means there's my answer. Okay. This trinomial had a common factor in each of the terms. Once I pulled that common factor, I just had a plain old x squared, leaving it a lot easier to deal with. So let's look at another one. Let's look at 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. Nothing in common. Let's write our parentheses down. Then, factors of 3. Hey, I know what the winner of this is. There's only one choice. Factors of 2. 1 and 2. Mm. Once again, there's my winners. So that means I'm going to have a 3x and an x as my possibles. Then, since everybody's a plus, my signs are going to be plus plus. Now, it's going to make a difference as to whether I put the 1 here and the 2 here, or the 2 here and the 1 here. I don't really know which yet, so let's just put something down. All right, so I put something down. You know what I have to do. I have to check it. So let's write this down and check. Multiply the 3x times the x, that's 3x squared plus 3x times 2, that's plus 6x. Now multiplying the 1 would be x plus 2. Let's add this. Oh, 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 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. Hmm, that's not right. Okay, so that means what I did was wrong. So what I'm going to do, this time I had the 1 and the 2 here. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to take out that 1 and 2. I used to have a 1 and 2 there. I'm going to leave myself a note because I'll forget what I had already tried. And I, sometimes I keep trying the same thing over and over. Somewhere I need to have a list of what I've tried. I know this doesn't work, so let me mark through it. Let's try a 2 and a 1 and see if that works. So let's write it down and then multiply. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 1 is plus 3x. Then we have our plus 2x plus 2, and we distribute the 2. Adding this, 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. Oh, there's our winner right there. So that means 3x plus 2 times x plus 1 is our answer. No common terms in this trinomial. So what I need to do is take factors of the leading coefficient, which is the 3, and then I need to take factors of the constant, which is the 2. The constant is the number with no x's, and the leading coefficient is the big guy out in front of the highest power. 
so we need a strategy for factoring polynomials completely. Step one, is there a greatest common factor? It was like my first example. If yes, factor it out, then go to step two. If no, just go straight to step two. Step two, how many terms are there? If there's two, it's a binomial. Go on to step three. If there's three, it's a trinomial, and we're going to break it apart and factor using our parentheses methods. We're going to factor it. So then we go to step three. There's more than three terms. You're going to have to use the factor by grouping method that we did uh, quite a bit earlier. So and then you'll go to step three. And you'll check by multiplying your factors, always. All right, let's look at another one. These, you just have to keep working a bunch of them. All right, we have 18x squared minus 3x minus 10. Do I have a common factor? I always ask myself that question when I do these. Do I have a common factor? No. So I'm going to look at the factors of 18. 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. Eww. Let's look at the factors of 10. 1 and 10, 2 and 5. Oh, my goodness. I know I've got this parenthesis deal going on. Now, one of my strategies is just to look at this middle term. He's kind of small. Since he's small, there's not a big difference in the numbers. So I'll pick the ones that are closest together. 3 and 6 are close together, and 2 and 5 are close together. I don't know if it'll work, but it's something to try. So I've got to choose something and try it. So I'm trying these two. What this means is there are so many possibilities. Uh, there's more than four. There's lots of them. Um, the signs, though, I know that I have to have a plus and a minus. No matter what happens, I have to have a plus and a minus. Um, I know I'm going to try the 3x and the 6x, so I'll put those here. Um, It'll be different if I have the 6x and the 3x because of the plus and the minus. So I'll try those here. Oh my goodness. Then I could swap up the 2 and the 5 everywhere. Oh my goodness. And then there are more possibilities because it might be the 3 and the 6 and the 1 and the 10. It could be the 2 and the 5 and the 1 and the 18. Or it could be the 2 and the 5 and the 2 and the 9. It could be the 2 and the 9 and the 1 and the 10, or the 2 and the 9 and the 2 and the 5, or the 1 and the 18 and the 1 and the 10, the 1 and the 18 or 2. It could be any of that. And then that plus minus can be swapped. So there are lots of possibilities for this one. Keep track of what you've tried and what you haven't tried, because otherwise you're going to find yourself working the same thing over and over again. So I just keep myself a list, I like just like this, and I just start working. I'm going to try this one. 3x times 6x, well that's 16, I mean that's 18x squared. 3x times a minus 2, that's minus 6x. Minus, I mean plus 5 times the 6x plus 30x minus the 10. That is 18x squared plus 24x minus 10. Nope, that's not right. Okay, so give him up. Let's try the next one. I get 3x times 6x, so that's 18x squared minus 15x. Now the 2 times the 6, that's plus 12x, minus 10. Put that together. Uh-oh. I found him. Woohoo! Believe me, there were so many possibilities to find it on the second try is pretty lucky. I've worked hundreds of thousands of these, literally. I'm pretty good at guessing. You're probably not going to get it on the first, second, or third try. You, but I never used to either, so now I know this is the answer. So, you know, there's just so many possibilities. Um, the more you work, I promise you, the easier that these get. We need another one. Well, let's look at this. 15x squared minus 85x plus 100. Holy moly. I see a 5 and everything. Let's pull that out. Okay. That looks a little more manageable. I have 5 times, when I divide the 5 out of everything, it was 3x squared minus 17x plus 20. Alright, so let's play with that one. 
I look at the factors of 3, 1, and 3. They're winners. I know i got this parenthesis thing going on. Let me circle my winners. Need the factors of 20. Oh, my goodness. You know I'm going to pick 4 and 5. I always like to do those small dudes first. Uh, so I'll choose those. But it could be the 2 and the 10 or the 1 and 20. I don't know. Uh, I need a few more of these. So let's write these in. Signs. And I don't want to be guessing around on my signs because I know exactly what they are. You see this plus 20? In order to make a plus 20, it has to be a plus plus or a minus minus. I know it's a minus minus because of that guy. So plop those minuses in there best you can. So I'm going to need an x and a 3x. So let's plug them in there. Uh, yeah, let's plug them in there because I don't know, I've got more things to go. I know I wanted to try the 4 and the 5. I don't know what I'll try if that doesn't work, so I'll just say I know it might be continued because I ha might have to try the 2 and the 10. I just don't know. So, let's multiply, leaving the 5 hanging out. I've got x times 3x is 3x squared, minus 4x, then i got to do the minus 5, that's minus 15x plus 20. Let's write it all down. Adding those middle terms, minus 4x and minus 15x, that's minus 19x. That's not right. Let's try the next one. I've got the 5, of course, then I've got x times 3x, that's 3x squared, minus 5x, minus 12x plus 20. All right, let's see what that adds together. That minus 5x and minus 12, that's a minus 17. Ooh, that's what I was looking for. Hey, you're my winner, bud. You know what? There were so many more possibilities to this. I'm glad I found it on the second try. If you don't, that's okay. Just expect that you got to keep trying and trying. These are hard. Eventually, you'll get good at them, but it's going to be a struggle. If you need any help, you know, you can email me, rweaver10 at alaska.edu be glad to have a Zoom meeting or collaborate or anything like that. All right. Have a fantastic day.